Your voice, your opinion, your community. Fact TV, free speech, protected. I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine. Yeah. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in awe of you be still? Will I stand in your presence, or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Yes. And what I want to do today is this, is I'm going to be looking at the God that we may not know, even though we think we know God. And look at his goodness to us. Last week we looked at his goodness to us, and today I want to look at it. And, and one of the things that I need to make sure that we understand is I cannot cover all the ways in which God is good to you and me. There, there won't be never, never enough Sundays to be able to do that. So what I've done is I've chosen about four today of areas where God has been so good to us and where God's promises are absolutely true. Now, if you can give me that psalm that we read earlier, Psalm 145, just for a second, and we'll start off with this because we, we have been told by God that we as men and women of God especially, we need to be praising Him Praising Him for the trials and tribulations which we, which we all go through. Praising Him for those wonderful times in which God gives to us. We spend with family and friends or some successes we see or whatever. So we need to be a people of praise. We need to be a people that really consciously make an effort to praise Him. That's why we see the end. I will. You see... That is a conscious effort that the psalmist says that he will do. I will, I am going to praise you. I will extol thee, Lord. I will lift you up. I will bring you before those to which I make contact with. I will extol thee, my God. So why is it to be praised him? Because he's my God. He's the one who is above all things. He is the one who created all things. He is the one who does all things. He is the one who is with me all the time. He, he's my God. He's my God, but he also is my king. I don't own myself. How many of us own ourselves? You know, God never said to us, now I, I just want you to know this. It is not in the scripture at all where it ever says, be true to yourself because you own yourself. Uh-uh. That's not there. That is a man-made saying that we like to attribute to God. But the psalmist goes and says to us, look, I will extol thee, my God. Why? Because you're my king. You're the one who is in charge of my life. You are the one who guides my life. You are the one who leads my life. You are the one who protects me in my life. You are the one who is patient with me in my life. And by the way, those are the four areas that we're going to look at today with God's protection, God's patience, God's, uh, God's um, no, I forgot, leading our pathways is over. That, that, that's who he is. So the psalmist goes says and says, I will extol thee why? Because you're my God. But I will extol thee because you are my king. Then what does it say? I will. Whenever you see that term, 
I will. What does that mean to you? It's already done to take you care of. But what it means is I will make a conscious effort to do it. It is a determination in which I have made that I will make sure that I will scold thee. I will make sure that I will bless your name forever and ever. So we as Christians need to be a people of praise. Now, we spend a lot of time here at CCC in prayer. And that is a great thing. God commands us to pray. Pray without ceasing, for example. But God also tells us that along with your prayer life, you ought to have a praise life. Where we can thank God for all that he has done, and all that he is doing, and all that he will do. So the psalmist goes and says that. Every day will I. You can turn it around. Every day I will bless you. I will praise your name for how long? Forever, Forever and ever. And then he goes and talks about the greatness of God, verse, verse 3 and so forth. Look at verse 6 of verse 5. I will speak of the glorious honor of your majesty. How many of us speak of the honor of God's majesty? What does it mean that, that for his majesty? What does it mean that, that he is majestic? Well, remember Isaiah? When Isaiah had, had a vision of God, and the vision of God talks about his train that flowed, and the majesty in which he had entered up, and he saw the majesty of God. Can you imagine seeing that? Can you imagine Jimmy this morning? Where normally he would be here listening to me. And now he's in glory. Worshiping face to face Jesus Christ and seeing him in his majesty. Not just hearing about it, but experiencing it. <clears throat> and if you know Jesus Christ, your personal Savior, guess what? We have a day coming when that will happen with us too. <clears throat> we will bow before his majesty. Beyond anything you and I can comprehend is the majesty of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he goes and says, Look, I will honor, I will speak of the glorious majesty. And of thy wondrous works. I mean, so, you know, Phil gives time for us to give praise to God for the things he's done. And there are times, certainly, that we kind of sit here as a church and we're pretty quiet. And my thought, as I'm sitting there listening and thinking, oh, God must have taken vacation this week. Has he really? No. Or has he done wondrous works in your life that maybe we just take for granted today. How about the work of his life, uh, what he's done in my life, just for giving me air? You know, he put lungs in my body for a reason. You know what that, those lungs do? They take in the air that he provides for me to breathe. He gave me a stomach, big one sometimes, but anyway, he gave me a stomach. Why? So I can take in the food in which he provided for me. Now, let me ask you a question. This just me. God gave us five senses that we can enjoy Him with. Taste, smell, touch, so forth, right? Hearing, seeing. He's given us five senses. What would it be like for you and me if He gave us stomachs to eat and all He gave us is just one little bland piece of unleavened bread. How exciting would it be to sit down and supper and say, oh, another piece of unleavened bread. Whoopee. That has no taste. Would you want to live life that way? So what does God do? God said, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make spices, and I'm going to make herbs, and I'm going to make these so that your taste buds can experience 
the fullness of all that I am. I'm going to make it so that you can see the different colors for flowers and, and the different colors of the leaves. Have you noticed that the leaves are turning? Yeah. Scary thought, isn't it? We were sitting on a deck at the campsite yesterday and leaves were falling down and I was saying, oh no, summer's ending. But isn't it beautiful to be able to see the different <clears throat> colors and, and the different things when God has provided for you and me? Wow, I will praise you for your majestic works. And then he says in verse 6, and then, meaning all of mankind, by the way, this is not a gender thing. He's talking about all of mankind, and that mankind shall speak of the might of thy terrible, meaning awesome, works. Those things in which God has done that you and I can look at and say, wow. Just what Nate shared with just in the way the doctors have given, the, the Lord has given doctors all the wisdom to be able to take care of all these different things that are happening in Tristan's life and, and they're working. Wow, all of your terrible, awesome acts. I will declare thy goodness. Now how many of us really are determined to declare the goodness and the greatness of God? By the way, it's really interesting when we go and we talk about the goodness of God there's a term that I, that I want to use, and it is this. When I talk about the goodness and the greatness of God, I'm really talking about the generosity of who God is. Has God been generous with you? Amen. How about just the fact of salvation? How many of us deserve to be saved? How many of us deserve to go to heaven? How many of us deserve to have our sins totally forgiven, blotted out, never to be remembered again, to be cast into the depths of the sea, as far as the east is from the west? How many of us deserve that? None of us. But God, in his generosity, sent his only begotten son to Calvary's tree so that he could show us his generosity to you and to me by making us his children. By the way, how many of us understand that when God made us his children, he has made us heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ so that all that Jesus Christ has is mine? Is that a generous God or what? And God gives it to us freely. So when we're talking about the goodness of God and we're looking at the majesty of God, and the greatness of God. We're talking about, Lord, God has been so generous to us as human beings. For the most part, He's given us good health. For the most part, you know, all these things that, that He's given to us. Our families. Our church families. God has been good. How often has God been good? All the time. All the time. And all the time, God is good. good. Not just, he's not a part-time good God. He's a full-time good God. And he's been generous to you and to me. So what I want to do is I want to look at four areas, just four little characteristics that certainly if we wanted to extend it out, we could, we could extend it out forever about the areas where God has been so good to you and to me. Give me, for example, Genesis 27, verse 13. Genesis 27, 13. Watch this. Did you put that in? You didn't put that in? Ah, uh, let me read it to you. Genesis 27, 13. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You see, if I did not see, experience the goodness of God, 
I would have faded away, dead away. Why? Because what is it all for? We are living and seeing the goodness of God. I had fainted unless I had believed to see. So what does it take to look at the goodness of God? It takes faith to believe and see it. You see, so many people cannot see the goodness of God these days because they don't have faith. They don't believe that he is. They don't understand that he is a reward of them who diligently seek him. They don't understand that God is one who, who has provided all of this. That God is the creator of all things. And that everything you and I have comes from his mighty hand. And the psalmist says, I would have fainted unless I had seen. And I had believed to see. The goodness of God. I think there's so many people in our churches today that don't see, don't experience, don't really understand the goodness of God because they don't believe that He is a good God. But He is. Amen. The little kid's song that I, I like very much. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are his, the rivers are his, the stars are his handy work too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. Is that your God? Yes. Boy, one amen. Wake up, people. Amen. 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 Thank you. Goodness. So you got that in verse 13. Can you give me verse 14? I hope. Watch what he says. Verse 14 says, Wait for the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. So, sometimes we have to do what? I have to wait on you. How many of us are impatient? <laughs> Just like I was with your amens. Come on, people. Amen. 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 Right, give it to me now. Don't wait until you go home and say, oh, Pastor made a good point. I guess that was an amen. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. What did he say? He says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. How many of us are, waiting, are willing to wait on the Lord? <laughs> Lord, I wanted it yesterday. <laughs> and God says, I'll give it to you tomorrow. Because guess what? That's when you need it. You know, you know, we find that God, for example, the scriptures tell us that God's mercies are new every morning. Do you know that God does not expect you and I to live on yesterday's mercies? And God does not give us tomorrow's mercies today. God gives me the mercies that I need today for today. And tomorrow God will give me the new mercies I need for tomorrow. But I gotta wait on the Lord. And I say, wait on Him. Boy, it, it's, it's so neat to, to be able to see this. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. How many of us are of good courage these days? We're looking at the things that are happening and say, oh man. Wait a minute, no, we gotta be of good courage. Why? Why can I be of good courage? Because I got the Lord. <clears throat> and He's majestic, He's King. He's God. I can wait on Him because He knows all things. I can wait on Him. You know, I look at this verse and I say, you know something? God provides everything I need. Now, let me, let me make a qualification. The scriptures do not say that God will provide everything I want. Why? Because an awful lot of junk I want that is not going to be good for me. And God says, I know what's best for you. I will provide all your needs. Now, does that mean it's going to happen right here today? Or does that mean that that will happen when I wait upon the Lord and I see that He will do it when I need it? He'll give me grace when I need the grace. He'll give me mercy when I need the mercy. He'll give me peace when I need the peace. He'll give me strength when I need the strength. He'll give me courage when I need the courage. 
He will give it to me when I need it. Amen. But you know something? I'm not willing to wait for it. We're such anxious people. When Paul goes and tells us in Philippians to be what? Anxious for nothing. Yeah, but God, I wanted it yesterday. Yeah, but Harold, I want to give it to you if you want, because tomorrow you're going to need it. It's time for me to say, time for us to say, okay, Lord, you know what's best. But you know something? God promised, and this is part of his goodness, this is part of his, his generosity, is that God promised that he will provide what we need. Give me verse, uh, chapter 33, verse 5 of Psalms. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Oh, we're right. Watch this. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Do you see that? How many of us have looked around lately and looked at the fullness of God's goodness and what God has given to us? We are so apt. We are, and I got my hand, we are so apt of not seeing the goodness of God, we are so apt of looking at the negative things. Boy, we have become such a negative society, a negative people. When God says, look, I have filled the earth with my goodness, why don't you look at that? Why don't you see that? <coughs> see what I provided for you. See that? Now, so many people, and I'm one, so many people, we complain about the summer. How many believe we've had summer yet? <laughs> right? I don't believe we've had summer yet. So there's been days that I get up and say, oh man, rain again! <laughs> and God's looking down at me saying, Harold, I know what you need. You need more rain. <laughs> yeah, but Lord, I don't need any more rain. The river's overflowing as it is. God says, you need it. Why? Because I want you to learn to depend on me. I want you to know and to enjoy that I know what is best for you. I will provide for you. I promise. Just as the girl signed today. Look, I didn't promise you, you know, I need your life. I didn't promise you that you would never have any trials. I didn't promise you that, that everything would be hunky-dory. I didn't promise you that you'd be, you know, on top of the world. No, I didn't promise that. All I promised is that I'll be with you through everything you go through. But I will provide that to you. So the first thing I need to look at when I look at the goodness of God and the generosity of God is the fact that He provides for us. Give me Psalm 103, verse 13 14. Like as a father pitieth his children. Isn't that amazing? I love that. I love that verse. How do we start our prayer time? Especially, for example, if you look at the Lord's Prayer or the Disciples' Prayer, how does Jesus tell us to start it? Our Father. Our Father. Go out in heaven. Holy is your name. As a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear, the word fear means respect, honor <coughs> him. Wait a minute. God says, you know something? You're my child. You're my child. I looked up a verse this, this week and, and I just thought it was just kind of kind of a, a neat verse. Matthew 7, 11, and I don't know if she gave that with you or not, because I had that kind of crossed over and all kinds of stuff. But listen to what this, word, this, this verse says. If you then, being evil, so who's he talking to? All of us of mankind. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them 
that ask him. So he says, look, if you as, as human beings, sinful human beings, that's what we are, you know how to give good gifts. How much more do you think I can do for you? As your father. He says, as a father pitieth his children. Do you think God likes watching you and I go through the struggles we go through? Do you think God's sitting on the throne going, oh, good for them? Or do you think he's pitying us and saying, you need this to grow. You need this to learn of me. You need this to see my goodness. You need this. I don't want to give it to you. But you need it. How many of us love watching our kids? You know, I remember my, my kids when they were little and teaching them how to ride a bicycle and they would crash their bicycle and their knees got strung up or their elbows got strung up. And you look at them and say, well, you deserve that. You know? <coughs> no, you go and you, 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 know, you wash it off and you do all this kind of stuff. And, and then you say, but get back on the bike. <coughs> get back on the bike. Why? Because you need it to learn. And you do. And we get this like a father pleads and children, so the Lord pleads them and fear him. For he knoweth our frame. Do you know that God knows how much you can take? There's no, no temptation will take you, but such as common to man. But that he will make the way of escape that you may bear it. He knoweth our frame. How many of us have looked up to God and said, Lord, I think he just went a little overboard. I, as your pastor, have said that to him this year. Now, I don't know if you folks pay attention to the statistics, <coughs> but I have them in my office. Do you know that Jimmy is number seven of people who were affiliated with this church that have passed away this year? Seven. In this little tiny congregation. And I looked at that and said, Lord. And he looks down at me and says, Daryl, I know you're friend. I know your church is friend. I know what they can take. And I'll be there every step of the way. I'll be there. I know your friend. He remembers. Best. I know what you're made of. How does he know what I'm made of? Yes. Yes. He came down from heaven. And I love this picture, and I've shared it with you a dozen of times, where God came down from heaven, and he knelt down in the dust of the ground, and he made this frame, and he called it Adam. And then he bent down to Adam, and he put his mouth in his, and he breathed life into Adam. Amen. Yet he's a God who doesn't care for us. Baloney. He is our good, gracious, generous God. Amen. So not only does he provide for us that he does for us, but he is also patient with us. I know you're praying. I know you think it's hard. And I know you're going to look up to me and say, Why, Lord? And I'm going to look down at you and say, Because I know what's best. Now, God never said you and I have to like him. But I have to respect him and honor him for it. Because he knows what is best. So, God in his goodness, provides for us. God, in his goodness, is patient with us. Give me, give me Psalm 107, verses 8 and 9. And I, and I just want to see this. And we looked at this last Wednesday night, by the way, just a little bit. But watch this. All that man would pray, remember when I said, how many of us spend, spend any time at all during the day just praising him? 
looking at his goodness, looking at what he's provided, look at, look at what he's doing, how he's working in our lives, how he's touching our lives. And what? All that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfies the longing soul. And he fills the hungry soul with what? Goodness. And whose goodness is it? It is his goodness. Give me verse 15. Watch what he says. Same, same time. Oh, that man would pray to God. How many times does God have to tell us in this Psalm 107, by the way? How many times does God say to us, Oh, that man would pray to God for his goodness? But how many of us consciously praise him for his goodness to us? Even when things are tough. Even when things may not be going our way. What does God say? We are to praise him for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Give me 21. I think that's a little. Oh, that man would praise the Lord for his what? His goodness. Why? For his wonderful works to the children of men. Who are the children of men? People. We are humanity. That's you and me. So what is God saying to you and me? We are to give him praise for his Goodness. Give me verse 31. Watch this. All that men would praise the Lord for his goodness. For his wonderful works of the children of men. Six times God has said that in this beautiful psalm. So do you think the psalmist is trying to get something to prosper us? Do you think that the Holy Spirit of God, when he told the psalmist to write that, is trying to get something to prosper us? What does he want us to get across? Oh, we ought to praise him for his goodness. Now, do you think God is patient with you and me? Yeah. Boy, I wear out his patience and not, I mean, I wear out your patience. So just imagine what I do with that. <laughs> and I mean, God is so patient with you and me. God looks down and says, oh, son, you know, you're going to smile up. How many times did my father tell me that? I don't know how many times my heavenly father's told me that. But he's patient with us. So God provides for us. God is patient with us. Let me give you another one. Let's go down to uh, Psalm 34, verses 7 and 8. Watch what he says. The sons of Jacob came out of the field when they had heard it, and the men were grieved, and they were very wroth because he had rock fully in his milk and lying with Jacob's daughter and so forth. Is that? No, not that. It was a psalm. Psalm 34. I'm sorry. Oh, I gave you the wrong Watch this. Psalm 34, 7 and 8. The angel of the Lord encamps around about them that fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. So what does he say? Verse 7, the angel of the Lord encamped around about them that trust him. Hey, let me ask you a question. How many of us believe that God has angels encamped around you and me? He says he does. You know he does. I tell you what, I keep mine busy. <laughs> you know? But I believe that certainly there are heavenly agents that God has sent Matter of fact, if you read the book of Hebrews, it says that there are so great a cloud of witnesses around us. Who are they? Not only the saints that have gone before us, but they are the angels that are now here saying, hey, we will get you through this. The Lord has sent me as his emissary to protect you, to get you through it. When you think it's something that is too hard for you to get through, God doesn't just leave us willy-nilly here on the earth and say, oh, you're on your own, kid. Good luck. God says, no. I have agents that are going to protect you. Remember the account, I think it's in Daniel chapter 10. Remember Daniel had prayed for something? And the prayer had gone up to God. It got to God, fine. But then God was going to send down the answer 
And do you know that there was a battle between Michael and Satan for that answer that God had sent down to Daniel? I wonder how many battles are going on in the spiritual realm. How many believe that there's spiritual warfare today? Man, is there spiritual warfare. But God's emissaries, God's angels, God's protectors are, are around about and they're fighting for you and for me. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever wondered? I have. It's driven me back. Of how many times God has protected me on something that I knew nothing about. But God says, no. You can't touch him with that. Remember the book, the, the, the Job? Mm -hmm. Remember Satan went up and God said, hey, see my man Job? I still got to wonder about that question. Have you considered my man Job? And the devil goes and says, yeah, I considered him and I'd like to do this. But what did God say? No, I tell you what, I will give you the parameters in which you can work. And you cannot go beyond those parameters. And then remember Satan goes back to him and says, Hey, Job is still crazy. You. Can I go a little further? Okay, I'll let you go just a tad further. But you cannot go beyond those parameters. I forbade you to do that. And Satan could not. Why? Well, because he's not God. <coughs> he's like thinking. But he's not. Have you ever thought those things where God has protected you that you just never seen? You never could imagine but God was protecting you? Boy, we keep him busy, don't we? I know I do. But God says, look, I tell you what I'm going to do. I will provide for you. I will be patient with you. I will protect you. And I even have agents sent for your protection. I can't imagine. I mean, you know, one thing, and this is just my wild imagination, but I just can't imagine, you know, the Lord saying to an angel, hey, I want you to go down and protect Harold Noyce. Oh, no, not that, please. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I don't think anybody but Harold. He's a chore in himself. Come on. Don't do that to me. But guess what? I have angels who are protecting me by the command of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it all is under the command of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, God provides for us. God is patient with us. God protects us. Give me Psalm 143, verse 10. You're going to go down the one further. 143, verse 10. Listen to this. This is great. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Let me give you the fourth thing for God is good for you. God guides our pathway. You know that? Lord, teach me to do your will. Lord, you lead me. How many of us wake up in the morning and say, Lord, lead my day today? Lead what I say. Lead, lead, lead what I do. Lead who I meet with. Lead who, who I can speak to. Lord, lead my day. Boy, we, get, we need to wake up and say that. Lord, lead me. That's kind of the Lord's prayer, isn't it? Lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. Wow. Lord, lead my day. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. And we can pray that with all confidence and say, Lord, I can ask you to do that, and you will not lead me astray. Because you're my God. And you will do that. Lead me. Boy, if we woke up and say, Lord, you lead me in sharing with people, you lead me in, in, in talking and, and doing this, wow. 
Now, why do I need him to lead me? There were two roads. You have the straight road, or the narrow road, and you have the wide road. Let me ask you a question. Which one do you want to go on? I want to go on the narrow road. I want to go on the road that he leads me on. How about this one? You have two groups of people. You have the saved people and the unsaved people. Which one do you want to? Lord, I want to be at the same, the same people. Lord, I want to be a little people that have called you always. I want to be a little people that have called upon you and asked you to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me. And that one day, when I give up the ghost in this place, I'll go home to be with you for all eternity. That's what I want to be. I want to be numbered with your people. How about this one? Lord, <coughs> two destinations. Which one do you want? Life of destruction. You see, Jimmy just went home to be with the Lord, and he's in eternal life. But there were millions who have died the same day that Jimmy did that went into destruction. Which one do you want? I want life eternal, don't you? And the only way to get that is say, Jesus, come into my life, save me, cleanse me, make me your child. God says, I can tell you what I do. And this is just four of them. But I tell you what I'll do. I'll provide for you. I tell you what I'll do. I'll be patient with you. I tell you what I'll do. I'll protect you. I tell you what I'll do. I can lead your life in the pathway that you take. Lord, I want to walk your pathway. I don't want to walk my own. Man, I've stumbled and fallen and tripped and did all kinds of things when I went my own way. But when I allow God to lead my pathway, I will never, ever, never, ever go wrong. Never. Because I've asked him to do it. Is God good or what? He is. My God is so good, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. How about yours? Is he that strong? Can he lead you? Can he provide for you? Can he protect you? Will he be patient with you? He promised. This is the promise I gave to you. And this is the promise he gave. Father, we thank you so much for your wonderful Father, I ask now that you would just be with us. Lord God, as we look at these things, that Lord, we would do what the psalmist said in Psalm 107, that men would praise your name. Oh, Father God, that means all humanity. Lord, give us the breath to praise your name for your goodness and your mercy endures forever. Make us a praiseworthy people. Not just the people who want, you know, say, give me, give me, give me. No, I want to be a person that says, Lord, there's certain things I need, but I want to praise you for all you've given already. Because Lord, you're so gracious to us. So bless our time. And Father, we thank you in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me I can only imagine yeah surrounded by 